Not so long ago, all the codfish caught in Newfoundland were split and salted by the people who caught them. And when the catching season was over, everybody turned to, washed it out, spread it on flakes, beaches or bonds, and dried it for sale. The price was small, and the work for young and old was pure drudgery without reward. Gradually, all this has changed to a point where the fishermen only catch it and gut it. Sometimes they don't even do that. They sell it round. The wheel seems to have taken a full turn, and this too is changing. There's not as much fish as there used to be. And the fisherman probably will be lucky if he caught half as much as he used to. However, if he could make it as he used to, at the prices prevailing, he could really make a living with something to spare, a good living as a matter of fact. But no one with any sense would suggest that a return to the slavery of fish making would be the answer. But what is the answer? What is the answer to high transportation and handling costs for delivery to energy consuming drying plants plus high labor plus the cost of administration, etc., etc. Some of the answers might be found by applying some small cheap and simple technology to take the place of the old tradition in fish making. So, I shall turn it over to Bill Morey to tell you about it. Right, well, Don, this uh, idea, as you know, was developed by yourself, mainly, about five years ago. But uh, being involved in salt fish for 30 odd years myself, as a purchaser and operator of, um, of um, fish from fishermen and developed and uh, dried into uh, uh, marketable fish and then packed. I had been thinking somewhat along the same lines myself, so when Don approached me about five years ago with this idea, I was uh, all ears, to say the least. Uh, so we, we uh, immediately put it into operation and uh, I would like to say that this type of, of uh, rig would be a godsend to fishermen who uh, are interested in curing fish to increase their income. And I can assure you that if a fisherman with a rig like this went into salting in his fish and curing good quality light salted fish, he would increase his income tremendously, even over and above the present prices being paid by fresh fish plants. Uh, which are, are good at this time, but nevertheless, salt fish, good salt fish can beat it considerably. With a, with a rig like this, where the uh, trays will roll in, can be stored in a building like this, stacked up, and pushed out on, uh, on rails like this, saves a tremendous amount of work. The, uh, the, uh, the, for the most uh, time consuming part of it is spreading the fish on the trays originally, and this is no different than spreading it on an ordinary flake. From then on, uh, it, would, it uh, cuts down on labor and cost uh, considerably. For we have time there, four men put, fill out these trays, put out all these trays in 10 minutes. That's about 40 kentles of dry salted fish, dry weight. And uh, just as a guess, I'd say, take the same four men, possibly an hour and a half to uh, an hour, at very least an hour, to spread in the tr traditional way. So this is a tremendous saving. If you take four, four to five days spreading, uh, the, the uh, saving in time is, is tremendous. Uh, it's also... Well, I have this rig myself, and I'd like to have another one. One is not quite, is not really enough for, for someone in the kind of operation I'm in, but it would uh, could serve in places like, say, Labrador, up on the straight shore and areas like that, 
uh, two or three or four crews of fishermen could be involved in one rig like this and use it between them on a cooperative basis. And it'd uh, be a very, very useful, uh, useful thing. The, uh, the building itself should be, uh, should be made completely uh, draft free and insulated uh, roof, walls, floor and all. And uh, it'd be desirable to have a small building behind it also insulated for storage of the fish so that when the fish is almost cured for purposes of working, and I don't have to explain that to any fisherman, he knows where working is, uh, that the store also be dry and have two good doors in, or good ventilation so that the, uh, on dry days, good days with good wind, the doors could be open and let the wind blow through. To keep the uh, to clear out any if the air has got a little damp, cleared out and dry out the fish again. This uh, we found uh, over five years' experience will hold fish in bad weather in a good state for several days longer than it would last in a normal store that is not insulated or built specifically for this purpose. The old type of stores that fishermen used before. It's uh, strictly for drying, it's not a packing store. The, uh, it's, it's designed really for fishermen, but it's very useful to people like me it's, uh, to cure the fish in. But of course, when I go to pack it, I'd move it to a larger store with the uh, packing equipment. Um, is there any, uh, has anyone any questions that uh, something I may have missed out? Have you anything done? You know, I was wondering uh, about uh, fly menace, fly blows and fish. If you would uh, care to mention the pyrethrum, as you've used it, and it can be used. Yes, we, I have used pyrethrum, as uh, Dan brought up to me here several years ago, and uh, I've used it since. Whenever a case, uh, uh, whenever it was needed. Now, uh, right now, I'm not using it. It's not needed. In this type of weather, late fall weather, there's not much flies, but it's a very, it's a very successful uh, idea when in the summer when the flies are around blowing and it's amazing to see what happens when uh, fish spread on a flake that's dipped in, uh, they've been dipped in pyrethium, uh, how the flies stay away from it. You can put a tray of fish dipped and one undipped side by side, one of them will be completely black with flies and the other no flies whatever. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't harm the fish whatever, it doesn't make any, any uh, do any damage at all to the fish and uh, I'm sure, and I've been assured, of course, that it's uh, completely uh, uh, free from any tox, tox, toxic um, elements that would c cause uh, the fish to deteriorate or not be palatable or cause any kind of sickness in that. That, that is a very useful thing to have around. I, have, uh, I used a little this year, but not too much because there was no need of it. We didn't have too much flies, but if I saw it was needed, I used it. And that's what I would recommend. Need it, use it if needed, but don't use it if it's not needed. Yeah. 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 What size tray do you think is the most suitable for this? We, we've got several sizes, 4 by 6 and 4 by 8 and so on and so forth. What do you think, through your experience now, is the right size would be for individual fishermen and even for your operation here? Well, uh, well, the, these trays have about three and a half by seven and a half, which is pretty close to four by eight. Uh, as you're using two men to lift the trays around, two men can quite easily handle a four by eight tray and would hold a little bit more fish and therefore would be marginally quicker and more economical than, than this one. I wouldn't go smaller than this because you're using the same number of men uh, to move them around and, and uh, they're going to increase their costs and their time. So I think a four by eight tray is a, is a really good size, plus the fact that most of the wire that you will get for them, the uh, uh, plastic wire, this is something else that should be used if possible, as uh, plastic wire such as I have here because you don't have any rust uh, and it doesn't harm the fish. You can get rusty wi wires that will stick to the fish if you turn the fish face back up in this manner on it and the, the fish is damp, it can pick up rust from the tray. So the, the ideal tray is, is, a, is a plastic wire. It's a little bit more expensive. Dan experimented with uh, uh, twine, uh, artificial twine. What type was it, Dan? <coughs> Would you recommend the mesh, trawl ends, second-hand trawl ends, or uh, 
uh, nylon. Yeah. Well, yes, nylon twine and this kind of thing could be could be used. Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I prefer to have the nylon wire, the type I have here. But nylon twine can be used quite well. As I have one or two trays with that on it, and it, that works out quite well. And it's cheaper, much cheaper, of course, to use. The um, and will last a long while as well. These are these trays undergo five years now, and as you can see, they're just as good as the day we we made them. Uh, one thing I'd like to lay particular stress on for fishermen uh, may be interested in curing fish, and that is to cure the fish right up to the packing state. This is a uh, in line with uh, the say with, for instance, uh, we've always been hearing about hewers of wood and drawers of water. It's to do with um, sardines or herring or anything else. Same thing applies, applies to codfish. And the dried, salted codfish, split codfish, is a finished product. Does not, there's only a little thing more that you could do with it, you fill it and put it in packages and that, and that's what I don't think would be very rewarding to anyone. I wouldn't want to be into it myself because I don't think there's much profit in it. The prices now for cured salt fish are very high. This is traditional type. I'd like to point out to fishermen that up to the, the stage the fish is ready to be packed, that they would get from the Salt Fish Corporation the same allowances that I get up to that stage. The additional allowances I get would be for, uh, for packing and uh, sorting and, and shipping the fish. Uh, they would, if a fisherman brings me a fish such as this, that is uh, wet and only a day or two spread in the sun, uh, that is what he's going to get paid for, a fish up to that stage. I have to make allowances for the loss of water, which is considerably, it's considerable, the loss of weight, uh, the, uh, the additional labour that I would have to charge on this fish to get it to the dry stage, he would lose that. He'd also probably lose on quality because I don't really know what that fish is going to be when it's dry. So I can't, I can't really pay him for number one grade fish. I'd be running a risk. I'd probably pay him for number two grade. When the fish is cured, it's probably a number one grade dry fish, dry light salted dried fish, and he would get up to that point. I'll, I'll point out again the full allowances from the Salt Fish Corporation for that fish, just as much as I get. Uh, and this is the way I advise, well, I advise fishermen to do, to cure the fish to this stage. There's also another point that is probably not taken into consideration very often, and that is that uh, trucks and that going up to the straight shore, up to, up to Labrador or anywhere else and from long distance like that, are trucking down partly cured fish to Holland on a hell of a lot of water. They're trucking into St. John's or wherever else, a drying plant, a lot of water and they're paying freight and everything else on, on that water. And uh, this would all be cut out. The water would be gone up in the air up in Labrador. It wouldn't cost anyone anything. So I think that's enough on that. I think that, that probably when uh, Don Andrews is talking, uh, he can probably elaborate a little more on what I've already said. But this is from the horse's mouth, I can assure you that. Uh, now, the other thing about in these buildings themselves, aside from... Uh, from uh, being well insulated and well built and air free. Uh, I have two or three humidifiers now, dehumidifiers, just ordinary ones that are just marginally successful. They're not, they're just, they're a little help. But I, I, I'm wondering, and uh, the people that are sitting down sort of and being paid to do this sort of thing, people, this is their job to do this, to develop the fishery and this kind of thing. If they couldn't come up with some type of thing uh, like a wind charger or something like this that could be used in these stores that for the, with the cost of fuel and everything, the electricity and everything the way it is now, that a wind, a wind charger would be, a, aside from the original cost, would be a very economical thing to run that could uh, dry the fish or help to dry the fish in the store during bad weather at a very, very little cost, very, very small cost. I think it's quite possible. In fact, I think it, it's... Uh, it's uh, it's a sensible thing to do, to go in that line, because I think that with the uh, 200 miles on and fish management and all this sort of thing, that fish, salt fish is going to come back. It's going to come into its own again. I don't think there's any way that the fresh fish plants are going to cope with the flux of fish at certain periods, nor, nor particularly the summer periods in Newfoundland and Labrador, and that salt fish is going to come back, and that the government or those people in, in a position to do it should 
be working in this line now to try and develop ways that would make it better, easier, more profitable to people involved in salt fish to handle it and therefore maybe encourage more people to get into that type of thing. That, that's, um, that's about all I can think of at the present time unless someone wanted to uh, ask me any question. But I certainly would recommend to, to anyone involved in salt fish and uh, who was interested, uh, I said this in the beginning, in curing salt fish for two reasons. One is to increase their income, and they do that considerably. And number two is to save labour and save time and make the work much, much easier to get this type of a rig. Uh, what you've just seen is an operation at Fairland, uh, Mr. Murray, where he buys the fish and makes it himself for the same arrangement to trays, roll of trays, and uh, similar shed, uh, but this is a fisherman, small fisherman's operation, where he does the whole work himself. And uh, I think it was this that Mr. Murray advocated. However, I want to introduce you to Mr. Bailey. Of, uh, Boyd Bailey of North Harbour, Placentia Bay. <coughs> okay, well, would you uh, begin by telling us uh, how you dry the fish from the time you wash it out right till it's finished? Well, uh, from the start, now, I wash it out, and I, uh, if I wash it out in the day now, I uh, spread it on the trays, and uh, I put it back in the evening, and if there's late in the evening I wash it, I just bring them and spread on the trays and pack them up and uh, next morning is fine, I just put it out and uh, it takes in every evening and that way he gets no rain on, see? Mm -hmm. And I leave it out then for, shows it out in for about five or six days, that's, it's just fine. And any, and, uh, any day is now to to rain and clear it up when I go out, well, my wife and my father there, and the youngster between them, they just puts it out for me. And, then, and if there's a, it comes a rain, well, I don't, you know, I don't take any time for the, take it in, about, I say about three minutes of taking the works. And then I try that was about a week, and I take it in and pack it up on the bench there, and, and uh, that's the work. And then I put it out for three or more, four more days, and then it's good enough. Yeah. Okay, Boyd, I'd like to ask you about the trays themselves. How, how large are they? They're, uh, what is it, four by? Eighteen by? Four by six. Four by six. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're made very, very simply, as we mentioned before, out of what, two by three? Two by three, yes, yeah. yeah. And um, what kind of uh, material do you have on there now for the... This there? This, yeah. That's this is a wire. A, yeah, plastic. Don't worry, plastic. Plastic coated wire. Yeah. yeah. You find that that's best? Oh, right? yes, yeah. Doesn't leave yeah. any marks on the fish? No marks, no. Mm -hmm. no. Uh, no. Any idea how long it would take you to make one of those? Oh, not very long. No? To put all these out, you say you had 48 yeah. Of these trays, eh? How long would it take you to put them all out? Yeah. Oh, we put them all out and I suppose about five minutes. Yeah. They're very easy to handle. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Just nudge them on and wheel them out. Yeah. And, and when you're not here, when you're out in your boat and, and the weather comes bad, what happens then? Oh, father and youngster puts it out. Moist. And they can handle these. Oh, yes, yeah. 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 You just lift it up on the wrecks and tray the tracks and just, you know, wheels them out. Yeah. Now the tracks themselves, what are they made of? Uh, two by three. Two by three, just yeah. nailed together? Just nailed together, just one on a flat and one on its edge. Yeah, so you've got the edge on one side only? Yeah. Edge on one side, yeah. 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 And you have plastic wheels on the trays? Plastic wheels, yeah. yeah. And um, these are just put on with, with staples? Yeah, just a bolt, yeah, staples. Just yeah. a bolt, yeah. holding them on and then staples yeah. hold yeah. them on to the tray then? Yeah. And you find it, it Rolls out easily? Oh, yes, rolls out, yeah, really easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. What I do is say there's one youngster gets on the upper end up there and shoves them down and one each side train just, you know, 
splash them off. Just lift them off. Yeah. And stack them off. Stack them off. Yeah. yeah. When do you use this most of of, of the year? At the beginning and, and end, you you were saying, or? Yes, in the spring. Yeah, yeah. In the spring and the fall. Yeah. Yes. You don't use it as much in the summer. Not as much, no. Not in the summer. No. Now, uh, you mentioned that this place is insulated. Do you think that's important? Oh yes. Yeah. What what advantage does it have? Well, it keeps coal. It's coal in there. Keeps coal the for the fish, eh? For the fish. Yeah. Oh yes. During the hot weather yeah. in the summer. Yeah. 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 How about on uh, wet, foggy days? Do you, you think it keeps the fish better than in an ordinary? Oh well, shed? yes. It keeps the coal, eh? The, the yeah. warm, hot day in the summer and sultry, you know. Mm -hmm. Keeps coal. How long could you keep it here, say, if the weather was bad, without affecting the quality of the fish? Well, I've had there a week. A week. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. The fish was still all right. Now, once the fish is dried, wh what do you do with it then? Oh, I just pack stuff here on the bench here. Yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. do you let the fish work? The well, I leave it uh, to get about uh, partly dry, and I take it off then, pack stuff here, and then push it again, then finish it. The just when you have a day or two, then it's good enough, then, so yeah. Mm -hmm. How many days would you have on it uh, at the beginning? Oh, well, about five or six days, good days, you know. Five or six good days, yeah. yeah. Boyd Bailey's drying shed is 18 feet by 20 feet. In five years of operation, the only upkeep has been the cost of painting the structure. This particular size shed gives Mr. Bailey ample room to store the 50 trays he uses, while still leaving extra room for the storage of lobster pots and other fishing gear in wintertime. With 50 trays, each holding 50 pounds of dry fish, Mr. Bailey is able to process 2,500 pounds of dry salted fish at one time. This year the weather was good and Mr. Bailey was able to dry his fish in eight to nine days. He also discovered that the insulation in his shed provided drying even during damp days when the fish could not be put out of doors. Boyd's father, Tom Bailey, who has fished the Newfoundland coastline for 50 years, feels the system is an excellent time saver for the small fishermen. Yes, I think it's the best that ever I've seen ever, ever I've seen. It's, it's lovely. From a labor point of view, yeah. and from a quality point of view. Yes, sir. There's no bringing it out and lugging it in. When it comes to rain, you just shove it in the store. No labor, highly tons. Well, that's, that's uh, that's what we're trying to do. Yes, sir. And we don't all we don't know all about it yet. And I didn't know all about it when I came down here, really, until you people got at it yourselves. And unless we can Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's not much more I can say about this. You've seen what's been done. And you've seen the application of new simple methods which no doubt, I'm sure you'll all agree, is an improvement over the old fish making. It's simple, perhaps it can be better, but we would like reaction from you people. And if there's any in more information you'd like, you can get in touch with me through the extension service of the Memorial University. Good luck to you. Give it a lot of thought. We hope you've been entertained and we hope you've learned something by it. Thank you very much.